Omega-3s versus omega-6s in your body is like two male lions competing for a mate. They look the same on the outside. You probably to the naked eye can't really tell the difference, but they're competing for the same thing. And the grass in your body is always greener where you water it. So let's break down the true difference between an omega-3 and an omega-6 and why you should be paying close attention. Do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please do make sure you hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. And then after this video, I invite you to check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They're an online grocery store and they are epic. So if you wanna get groceries delivered to your doorstep without having to go to the grocery store, without having to get in the car, just a couple clicks of the button, you can do it when you're hungry so you load up on all kinds of good stuff and it shows up right at your door, then you definitely wanna check them out. All right, so they are down below. There's a special link for my viewers, for the fans, for my followers, Followers, people that watch my videos so that way you can check them out and get all the good keto fasting thyroid essentials that you need okay naysayers are going to say that they're both omegas they're both fine fats they're both doing the same thing okay they're not they're very different even though they look the same the magnitude of what they do in the body is so different from one another okay they're both polyunsaturated fats. And what that simply means is they have more than one unsaturated bond. When you look at a fat, you have a bunch of carbon chains and sometimes there are saturated bonds, like a saturated fat has all saturated bonds. And then you have a monounsaturated fat like olive oil, which has one mono, unsaturated bond and then you have polyunsaturated fats like omega-3s and omega-6s that have more than one like two three four five okay unsaturated bonds so what's the difference between an omega-3 and an omega-6 since they're both polyunsaturated fats well the difference is omega-3s the last unsaturated bond is three carbon chains from the end with omega-6, the last unsaturated bond is six carbon chains from the end. Omega-3 versus omega-6. This small, small difference plays a huge role in how they are broken down in the body. And if you look at the image that's up on the screen right now, it shows the cascading effect of consuming omega-6s versus omega-3s. You see, here's what happens. They both compete for the same enzyme. Both omega-3s and omega-6s need something called desaturase to get broken down. Okay, well there's only so much desaturase to go around. Again, it's like you're fighting for the same girlfriend or something. You can't create more desaturase. So if your diet is already filled up with omega-6s, all the desaturase is used up on processing the omega-6s, so the omega-3s can't really get utilized. So there's not enough omega-3s in the world to counteract the fact that you're already loaded up with omega-6s. The biggest lever that you can pull with your diet isn't to add ridiculous amounts of omega-3s, you should always be giving yourself a good amount, but it's more so to pull back on the omega-6s, which we have way too much, at least in the Western diet, if you ask me. You see, linoleic acid, which is the most common omega-6 that we're gonna see in the Western world, prohibits the breakdown of alpha linoleic acid an omega-3 that we get from plant sources and things like that again that omega-6 is going to stop the conversion of omega-3s into the usable form so at all different levels it's like you can't avoid this guy okay again just to put it into an analogy form let's say that you fall in love with someone and you are pursuing that person like crazy you're going after them you're sending them valentines you're doing everything you can you're begging them and every time you start to make ground, this other person comes in and just swoops in and does it better, okay? And once you think you made some ground, it does it again. That's what omega-6s are doing. If the omega-6s are there, they're going to win. Now you may be thinking, what the heck? If the omega-6s are getting preferentially used so much, they must be important, right? Well, no, it's not that. We aren't designed from an evolutionary standpoint to just consume a bunch of omega-6s. What's happened is our diet has shifted so much to consuming so much more omega-6s that our body is doing what it can to accommodate that. It doesn't mean that's how it should function. So here's what happens with omega-3s versus omega-6s. Just a brief synopsis as far as inflammation goes, because it's very important. It's been shown in studies that omega-6s, they produce what is called thromboxane A2. This is what's called a platelet aggravator. Okay, so it triggers platelets to aggravate and build up in your bloodstream, okay, in your arterial walls. This, my friends, is why your doctors tell you to consume omega-3s. Yes, even doctors, I'm not a doctor, I don't claim to be one, but your doctors will still tell you, get your omega-3s in because it's good for your heart, good for your arteries. 
Well, what they don't tell you is, more importantly than getting the omega-3s in, is getting the omega-6s out, because the omega-6s drive that platelet aggravation that makes it clump up. The omega-3s, on the other hand, stimulate the production of prostaglandin D3, which does the opposite. But again, those omega-3s cannot do their job if they're overrun with good old Marty coming in again and taking your girlfriend. Okay, now let's touch on one more thing that's not related to inflammation because I'll do a separate video on the inflammation piece. Membrane fluidity. Again, if you look at the molecular structure of an omega-3 versus an omega-6, an omega-3 is slightly more fluid. Okay, so if we have more omega-3s coming in, it improves what is called membrane fluidity. That membrane fluidity is everything. It allows things to pass through the cell membrane. It allows the membrane to move. It allows the cell to move and be more accommodating. Omega-6s will occupy the membrane more if we have more of them. Omega-3s will occupy if we have more of them. Meaning, if we have more omega-3s, you have a more fluid cell that is more accommodating to change, which is what we want. We want adaptable cells that can change with what we are doing. And it all starts with that desaturase and that cascading effect. So when I say that omega-6s and omega-3s are important, don't just think that I'm some jackass telling you not to consume omega-6s. I have a reason. I'm not just saying it to hear myself talk. Omega-3s are important. Omega-6 needs to be reduced, period. See you tomorrow.